I think we're G to G on this epi. What's up everyone? This is the How to Vegan podcast. I'm Kristen. I'm the host of this very podcast you're listening to, and I'm so happy that you're tuning in. If you're wondering who I am and you're interested in learning more about me, then check out my website, kristenemily.com. Uh, I also have a YouTube channel where I post lots of vegan-related videos like what I eat in a days and vegan recipes and nutrition info and some daily vlogs sometimes. Uh, I also have a Facebook group which just so happens to be called How to Vegan, just like the very podcast you're listening to right now. Uh, it's a great group to ask questions, find support, and share awesome inspiring pictures of all of the delicious vegan food that you make slash eat. And speaking of vegan food, let's talk about vegan food. And something that many people say is one of the hardest things to do as a vegan, eating out, dining out, going to restaurants, whatever you call it. That's what we're gonna talk about today. I have some awesome tips on how to make dining out as a vegan not so overwhelming and actually pretty damn fun because who doesn't like to go out to eat? I do. I don't have to do the dishes and I don't have to prep and I just get someone to feed me. I love it. I was also in the service industry for like 15 years of my life. So I'm real keen on this info. I was, you know, a server and a bartender and a bar manager and all of that stuff. So very, you know, in tune on how restaurants work and what's appropriate and what's not. So I think that this episode should be really, really helpful for those of you kind of maybe struggling with this. So if your friends are going out or you have a work dinner or whatever, and you're just not going to an actual vegan or vegetarian restaurant or friendly restaurant, um, then these tips are for you. So before we dive into the actual episode, I just wanted to say thank you so much to everyone listening and supporting this podcast. Y'all are seriously awesome. And I just really appreciate every single one of you. If you're enjoying the How to Vegan podcast, then make sure to hop on over to iTunes if you're not already there yet and leave a little review and rating for me. That would be super awesome of you. Oh, also, if you're into unedited video type things, then definitely make sure to go check out the How to Vegan podcast YouTube channel. Each podcast episode has an unedited video version that lives there. So if you wanna see my face or chat with me in the comment section, then go subscribe for sure. Links for everything that I've mentioned as well as those that I will mention, if I mention any, will be in the description of this episode, as always. For the full show notes and links and such, go to kristinemily.com, click on the podcast tab at the top, and you will see everything that you need. All right, now let's dive into this week's episode. Eating out, dining out, going to restaurants, whatever you prefer to call it as a vegan. So one of the first tips that I have that I think is just one of the most helpful things that you can do is download an app like Happy Cow or Yelp. I use Yelp just because Happy Cow doesn't pop up with restaurants unless they're like fully, totally vegan usually. Uh, and I like Yelp because you can kind of do more narrowly searching and stuff, but a lot of people really love Happy Cow and use the app all the time. I use Yelp. I just do a little vegan, type in vegan up at the top and whatever location I'm in. And then I just find restaurants around there. You can read reviews, you can refine your search to include the word vegan in the review. So Yelp or Happy Cow apps like that are super helpful. Or asking in a Facebook group is also really helpful. Like so many people in How to Vegan, you know, daily are like, hey, I'm going here on a trip. What should I eat in that city? And so asking in a Facebook group or on your Instagram in a story or something like that uh, can also be really helpful. But download those apps, try them out. You might like Happy Cow better than Yelp or Yelp better than Happy Cow, but testing them out, that's my number one, number one suggestion, because those are global. So anywhere you are, you can kind of find what is in your area and hopefully they'll have some vegan friendly options, if not like a full blown vegan restaurant, which is always dope. So the second kind of little tip I have for you is to plan ahead and check out the menu online. Most restaurants have their menu online now. So you can just plan ahead like, oh, let's go to this restaurant or go check some out on Yelp or whatever, and then look at their menu. And a lot of times they'll have like a little key at the bottom that'll say vegan, vegetarian, gluten-free or whatever. So you can check that out and then look at their menu, uh, see if there might be some things you can modify. And then that way you can kind of plan ahead and be like, oh, we should go to this restaurant. They have some options, or at least you'll have some ideas of what you could ask. Like, Hey, if I got this without this, would it be vegan? And you can kind of have an idea of what their menu looks like. So you don't just show up like, what am I going to eat? 
So that's kind of another good tip is just looking at the menu online and just figuring out from there where you want to go and then kind of what questions ahead of time you have for your server or bartender or whatever. So another thing is to look for allergen information on their website. So a lot of restaurants will have, you know, all the nutrition information and the ingredients and allergen information. And you can a lot of times find a huge chart that says, you know, these things don't have dairy in them or these things have dairy in them or whatever. So that can be another thing if you're really, you know, wanting to dig deeper and want to make sure that you're getting something that's vegan, uh, then look for allergen information on their website. Or you can ask when you get into the, the restaurant, sometimes they'll have it on hand as well for people who like are really allergic to gluten or dairy and have to completely stay away from it for sure or else they'll get sick um, which can happen to a lot of people once they're vegan you know now when I eat cheese and stuff like that I feel sick so I mean I'm technically allergic to it um, and some people do that some people will go to a restaurant and say like I'm allergic to dairy I'm allergic to eggs and that way they're more guaranteed probably to not get it accidentally in their food um, I'm not a huge fan of like lying it just doesn't make me feel super comfortable so i just try to explain that it's really important to me that i don't have animal products in my food yeah if it's a super sketchy place and they don't seem like they know what i'm talking about at all then sometimes you know i can't have dairy i can't have eggs i'm allergic you know sometimes just to make sure so you don't get something that will make you sick so another thing you can do is to just call and ask what options they have like so many times people will call the restaurant I was working at and be like, hey, do you guys have any gluten-free dishes or what would be a good option for this? You know, call the restaurant. There are people there working. Call and ask. And, and, and they might be able to like set you up ahead of time. Like if they know you're coming in, be like, oh, the chef can actually make a dish if they know ahead of time. So calling and asking doesn't hurt. And then they know that people want vegan options too. Um, so the more people that are kind of asking, the more they know that it's that it's wanted. So, and and always just to like explain to your server what is vegan and what isn't vegan because they might not know. So if they're kind of seeming questionable, they'll just be like, yeah, I can't have any milk, dairy, eggs, honey, meat products, anything that came from an animal or something that has a mom or a face. That's what I kind of like to say. Like, did it have a mom? Does it have a face? Like, don't eat it. Um, and that can kind of help too if people don't really know what it is at all. So another thing you can do, which might not be the most fun option, but sometimes it's your only option is to order from the like side option, side items menu. Um, a lot of places will have fries and fries are usually vegan unless they have some sort of coating on them or they're processed all weird or whatever, but most fries are vegan. Uh, so fries are always a good way to go if you're just like to have no other option and most restaurants have salads that you could just order without dressing without cheese without chicken and get or whatever meat they have on there um and and get some salad that way and order some you know oil and vinegar or vinegar and lemon or whatever you want to put on it so there's ways to make it work so again like the side items list can be great because sometimes they'll just have like you know a side salad or a side of rice or a side of steamed veggies and you can just order a couple of those make a meal and you're good to go. So check out the side item list. Even like breakfast, they'll have, you know, hash potato or hash potatoes. Hash potatoes, that might be a thing. Like hash browns or uh, breakfast potatoes or whatever and then maybe some fruit and so you can kind of make a meal out of the sides. So that's another good little tip that I have for you. Um, another thing is to maybe just consider eating a little bit uh, before you go. Uh, if you really like don't have any idea if you're going to a wedding or if you're going to like a family gathering, which I'm gonna do another episode on like family gatherings and stuff like that because that's kind of different than dining out and, and kind of how to talk to people about it and how to go about it. But maybe eating a little bit beforehand. I do this a lot if I'm like, I don't know if they're gonna have anything but fries and I don't wanna eat a meal of fries, then I'll maybe eat something at home uh, and then show up not super hungry. And if they have something, great, maybe I'll get it and take some home. Uh, if not, then I'm not just like, ravenously hungry and like bitch mode comes out because like you know that happens when you're hangry you're like um now I'm mad because I want food and why don't you have vegan food because like veganism is the best and then it's just like that cycle so <laughs> eat something before you go if you're really unsure uh, another thing that is great and an awesome tip I should have put this number one because it's probably my favorite is to look for like international restaurants like Indian restaurants Mexican Thai Ethiopian anything like that, Chinese, look for international restaurants because usually it's like the standard American diet or Western food 
that is just full of animal products and usually really processed and stuff like that too. Sugar, fat, salt, all of that. So a lot of times like international restaurants like those I mentioned will have already just vegan options on their menu. Like our Ethiopian, re Ethiopian restaurant in town is my hands down favorite and their like vegetarian section is just vegan because they don't use dairy unless you specify like I want to do butter with that one. So finding restaurants like those can be huge and then just kind of sticking to those. That's usually, there's like a pho place by our house and we have that a lot too because they have like a vegan pho and we'll go to Ethiopian and Indian food and we get Thai food a lot or sushi. So um, if you're going somewhere that, you know, like to a Mexican restaurant, make sure that the rice isn't cooked in chicken stock, that the beans don't have lard. So there are some things to always kind of keep in mind and be asking about and I'll talk about some things to look out for in a minute but try some international restaurants if you don't know if you're gonna like it or not try it out you never know you might love it uh, and do some experimenting because a lot of times they'll have vegan stuff just on their menu or really easily modifiable so and just be clear when you're ordering like be clear don't be embarrassed like don't be like I'm I don't know I can't really uh. which is you know sometimes it's intimidating when your server's like what do you want and it's your turn and you're in front of like your friends and family or like your business partners but just be clear say this is what I would like can I have it this way I would like it without this and I also don't eat any animal products which means this this and this don't be embarrassed like I said just own that shit be like hey I'm vegan don't be embarrassed to say the v word let's make that like a thing that is known it's expanding it's growing it's blowing up anyway but don't be embarrassed to let your server know you're vegan and to be like to own that shit that's all the only thing that keeps coming to my head but yeah and be clear when ordering tell your server hey this is what i want and sometimes usually when i just first sit down at the table I'll just say to my server when they're like, hey, do you guys have any questions? I'll be like, yeah, actually, and if it's a big group, they'll come over and kind of stand by you and you can just say, hey, I'm vegan, can you help me out? Do you have any suggestions? And it kind of makes them feel like you're involving them and not just like, I'm vegan, can I have this, this, and this, and be all bossy. Servers don't like bossy, I will tell you that for sure. Um, I've never worked anywhere where they've actually like put stuff in your food, so that's good to know, but be nice be nice to your server um that was kind of my next tip just be nice be patient be nice explain and don't you know don't be too pushy and just this 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 you know be clear but be really nice and and kind of help let them you know suggest some things and if they say you know a lot of times we'll get people will get gluten-free and vegan mixed up so a lot of times we'll be like hey do you have any vegan options they'll be like yeah you can do the burger on like a lettuce wrap and you're like oh yeah that's awesome but uh, you're, I think you're thinking of gluten-free. I'm actually vegan, which is animal products. That happened when we were in Pendleton last week. We ordered pizza and that's what she thought we meant. So it happens and just, it's okay. Remember, like I haven't been vegan my whole life. I didn't always know what it was. So just remember, like put yourself in their shoes. It's all about perspective and just be patient and be nice. I mean, that's really probably the number one tip is be nice to your server. And, and if your food comes out with like cheese on it or meat and you're like, what in the shit is this? don't be like that just be like hey and if they're like we can scrape it off be like no you know i actually that it'll probably upset my stomach do you mind making a new one and be totally cool about waiting and um and if it's a huge deal just don't go back to that restaurant but but being nice is always the best way to go i think <laughs> uh let's see what else was i gonna say if you're watching the, this if you're watching this right now then you're watching the unedited video version on youtube because i forgot my spot and now i have to find it so <laughs> um Oh yeah, okay, here we go. <laughs> um, another thing you can do is, so try substituting the cheese, the meat, or the eggs for more veggies or beans or rice or, you know, whatever. So if you say there's like a taco salad and you're like, can I get that without the beef and without the cheese? Then, um, and maybe add some more veggies or can I substitute guacamole instead? If you use the word substitute, they might not charge you for it. If you're using the word add, then they might just like, take off what was on there and add that other stuff. But if you use the word substitute, they might realize like, well, we're taking off a huge portion of what the meal cost actually is. So let's just add on some other, other stuff for them. Some restaurants will, some restaurants won't. You just gotta vibe it out. Um, but 
trying to add more veggies, beans, rice, whatever you're eating, whatever kind of food it is, instead of this, you know, and taking it out and substituting it for that other stuff can be another thing you can ask your server. Hey, if I get this, I do that a lot with salads. Like, hey, I really want this salad, but I don't want the animal meat on it and I don't want the cheese on it. So can I just get like double veggies, you know? And sometimes I'll say, if I have to pay for extra, that's fine. I just, you know, I just want extra veggies. And usually if you're nice, again, to your server, they'll be like, oh, she offered to pay, I'll just not. But if you're, if you're pushy and you're rude, your server is gonna probably charge you full. And then, yeah. So just be nice to your server. Serving is a really hard job. It seems like it's easy, but it is stressful and it's hard. So be nice to your server. <laughs> they really are trying their best and they have a lot going on. So be patient, be kind. Um, and asking, just asking doesn't hurt. I think asking is always uh, just an amazing thing to do. I'm realizing that that's like one of my goals this year is just ask because every time I ask people are like, yeah. And I'm like, I should have asked forever ago. <laughs> um, but you can get shy and it can be hard and I'm like an introvert. So yeah. <laughs> so those are kind of like my main tips for dining out, eating out. I like, I call it eating out. I don't call it dining out. So, but then that kind of sounds dirty. Like eating out is a vegan but whatever, that's what I call it. So some, those were like my main tips. And then I just wanted to give you guys an idea of some things to look out for, to, to maybe ask your server or whatever. Uh, just because these can be some hidden ingredients in some, you know, some food items that you order when going out. So some things to look out for would be like fish sauce in Asian cuisine or like shrimp paste in curries. So if you're, you know, at an Asian restaurant, just maybe ask if the dish you're ordering has any fish sauce because a lot of times it doesn't have dairy and it's obvious and it doesn't have meat it's obvious but your server might not know that it has like fish sauce or oyster sauce or shrimp paste in it so just asking like hey this seems vegan does it have any like fish sauce or whatever in it and they can go ask the person cooking the food should know they have to know for allergy reasons so just ask and they'll, and they'll let you know so another thing like chicken broth like i said in soup or in rice lard in beans so just ask these are some things that could be a possibility. Honey. Honey is one, if you're a true vegan and you don't want to mess with bees and take their stuff away from them, which I'll probably do an episode on that soon. Honey. Why vegan isn't hun why vegan isn't honey? Why honey is not considered vegan? Why it's still taking something from a sentient being, which I try not to do and most vegans try not to do, but a lot of times they'll put it in like balsamic dressing or the other day, or not the other day, uh, I can't remember when it was. We went to a restaurant and they had honey in their ketchup and they didn't tell us we were like done and then we found out later. We were like, what? So just asking, and this is not every place, but just being aware that this might be, you know, there might be honey hidden in some stuff. There might be milk or milk powder in like your bread or your bun or your pita bread. Uh, most buns have like milk or egg in them, which is a bummer. Uh, the pita bread at the Indian restaurant that I was eating for years that they told me it was vegan I found out had milk in it. So asking about milk or whatever in bread is always a good idea. Most bread is vegan, but like buns or pita bread or like special rolls and stuff you might need to be kind of careful about. Butter in croutons, like you're at a salad bar, you're stoked. There might be butter in those croutons. So just be careful, careful or ask or order it without if you don't want to risk it. Uh, eggs and noodles sometimes there's like egg based noodles and you know usually those are yellower and you can kind of tell or it'll say it on the menu but just asking hey your noodles don't have any eggs in them right easy uh, ghee and Indian food which is clarified butter and ghee I'm saying G H E E so if you see that on anything that's that's not vegan it's clarified butter uh, and that's in a lot of Indian food so just you know if it looks vegan and maybe looks you know like it doesn't have meat or dairy, it might still have clarified butter in it because uh, they use that a lot and so just ask and they'll let you know because they know what's in their food. They have to for like allergy purposes. So, alrighty, I think that's it. That's the end of my tip list. I hope this episode was helpful for you. Like I said, this is really a question I get all of the time and honestly, it's one of the reasons many people say they could never go vegan, but don't let it hold you back. Just like we talked about in episode seven about the cheese, don't let dairy or cheese hold you back from experiencing the amazingness of the vegan lifestyle and plant-based diet and all of the stuff that comes with it. There are really so many options and ways to make it work, especially if it's important enough to you. I know that most people who want to go vegan really want to go vegan or they really want to stay vegan once they've already chosen to make that lifestyle change. So just remember your why. Remember that the reasons you're choosing to go vegan are important 
At least they're important enough to you. So if you're sitting here listening to this wondering why people would want to go vegan, if you're like, I still am just not getting this, like, okay, this is how to avoid it in restaurants, but why do people want to do this? I'm not getting it. Then make sure to go listen to episode three, where I talk all about the top three reasons why people want to go vegan or decide to go vegan. It's a super helpful episode. So yeah, if you're wanting to learn more about veganism and why it's so important to many, to so many people, go check it out. Thank you so much for tuning in to this episode of the How to Vegan podcast. Make sure to go leave a little review and ratings, ratings, rating on iTunes and go check out the podcast elsewhere if iTunes is not your thing. It's also up on Stitcher and SoundCloud. And like I mentioned before, all of the unedited video versions are on the How to Vegan podcast YouTube channel. So go scope those out if you like that kind of stuff. And if you have any questions for me, the comment section of those YouTube videos is the perfect place to connect with me. I'm also on the good old Facebook and Instagram too, so go click on the links in the description and come say hi. I like connecting with you guys, so come follow me, subscribe, stalk me, all of the things. <laughs> so thanks again for listening. Y'all are the best. I'll catch you guys in the next episode. Peace out.